Hello there, I'm Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now we're all fairly used to new mobile processors being launched on a regular basis, maybe a new processor from Qualcomm, a new processor from Samsung, and that's pretty good. And we like to look at them and see what's improved, see what direction mobile processing technology is taking. But it's much rarer that we have a whole new company that starts making mobile processors. And that's what we have with the Xiaomi Surge S1. Earlier this year, Xiaomi launched a new phone, the Xiaomi Mi 5C, and rather than using a Qualcomm processor or a MediaTek processor, it uses Xiaomi's own processor, the Surge S1. So the question before us today is this, what's inside the Surge S1? Well, let me explain. So if you think about it, there are basically four main mobile processor makers in the world today. You've got Qualcomm with very successful Snapdragon processors. You've got MediaTek, which take up a lot of the mid-range processors and are very successful in Asia. And then Samsung make their own chips for its phones and Huawei make its own chips, the Kirin range for its phones. Now, basically, if you're not Samsung and you're not Huawei and you want to build a phone, you have to go to basically Qualcomm or to MediaTek to get your uh, mobile processor. Well, that was the case also with Xiaomi. All of the phones that Xiaomi have made have been predominantly using Qualcomm uh, chips. Occasionally, they also used MediaTek chips. But back in 2014, Xiaomi decided to start designing its own mobile processor. So it didn't have to buy from Qualcomm. It didn't have to buy from MediaTek. It would use its own in-house technology. So basically, what is it? Well, it's an octa-core processor that uses eight Cortex-A53 cores. Now, the Cortex-A53 is one of the world's most popular 64-bit cores. Now, when you find it in an octa-core configuration, what you basically have is four cores that are clocked at a higher frequency, in this case, at 2.2 gigahertz, and then you have four cores that are clocked at a lower frequency, in this case, 1.4 gigahertz. Now, of course, in an SOC, there's not just CPU cores, there's a whole bunch of other stuff. And more importantly, there is also a GPU. Now, the GPU, the graphics processing unit inside of the Surge S1, is the Arm Mali T860 MP4. Now, the MP4 part means it's a quad core, it's got four shader cores inside of it, which is actually very good for this mid-range target. Because, for example, if you look at the P10 uh, Lite, the Huawei P10 Lite, which I reviewed recently, that has the Kirin 658 in it, and that only has a two-core GPU uh, setup inside of it. Now, when Xiaomi talked about the Surge S1, they mentioned in several of their slides that it uses a technology called AFBC, Arm Frame Buffer Compression. Now, what's quite interesting, and, and it, this was a bit of a revelation to me when I found out a couple of years ago, one of the most expensive things to do inside of a mobile processor in terms of the energy it uses is shuffling around data. So if you think about it, you've got a game running at 60 frames a second. Well, 60 times a second, a full HD frame needs to get passed from the GPU to the display driver. Maybe you're decoding a video like from YouTube, it needs to go from the video decoder off to the display driver. And all this sending around these 60 frames a second full HD consumes a lot of battery power. So ARM came up with a system called the ARM Frame Buffer Compression which basically compresses the data internally inside of the chip so that when it's pushing this data from one place to another, it's doing it in a compressed form, which means there's less data to move. And in fact, it turns out that compressing it and then sending it is actually more efficient than um, just sending it full frame, even though you're spending time compressing that data. Now, when you look at the block diagram that Xiaomi presented at the launch of the Surge S1, it says very clearly that the ARM frame buffer compression technology is covering the GPU, the video processor, and the display process. But I got thinking, if it's supporting the ARM frame buffer compression technology, maybe they are Mali components in there. Now, there's lots of programs you can download from the Play Store that give you kind of system information. It digs around deep inside of Android to kind of find out what are the different uh, hardware components that exist inside of the phone. Now, I downloaded one of those, Ada64 is the one that I use, and I started to go through to see what we could find. And yes, there's the Cortex A53 optical processor. Yes, there's the Mali uh, T860 MP4 GPU. But if you then look in the section of that program about what codecs are being used, that's the encoders, decoders for video, you find that it talks about the V500 
decoders. Now basically, if this is using a Mali V500 video processor, it needs to have the relevant software drivers, kind of drivers from the Windows era to power that hardware. And that's exactly what it has. So from this, we can conclude that the video uh, decoder and the video encoder is actually the Mali V500. So now we have the ARM uh, CPU, we have the ARM GPU, and now we have the ARM uh, video decoder. So it would make sense that they've also used a display processor from ARM. Now, further digging around inside of uh, Ada didn't reveal that technology, but if you can actually use the uh, Android debugging bridge and connect to the file system, that on the smartphone, you can actually start having a look around. And there's a, in Linux, there's a place called the slash proc filing system, and it contains loads of really interesting information. And when I was rooting around inside of there, I was discovered that the display processor is in fact the Mali DP550. So what that means for us as consumers is that we know that the software stack that's included in the Surge S1 is actually optimized by ARM themselves. Now, don't think for a moment that means that Xiaomi didn't do anything, it just kind of grabbed components and glued them together. No, no, building a mobile browser is way more complicated than that. And there's a whole load of stuff in there that Xiaomi did themselves. But by using these technologies from people who are experts in these fields, Xiaomi were able to bring it together easily and quickly and most importantly, cost effectively so that it could launch its own mobile processor. So of course, since I actually have the Mi uh, 5C here, I couldn't resist some benchmarking. So let's see how Xiaomi's new processor stacks up against the competition. Now I've chosen three phones that are comparative with comparative mobile processors to the Xiaomi uh, Mi 5C. I've first of all titled with the Huawei P10 Lite and that's got the Kirin 658 in it. I've also had a look at the Oppo F1 Plus which has got a MediaTek processor in it and I'm also looking at the Huawei Nova which has the Snapdragon 625 in it. Now they're all octa-core Cortex A53 processors with Mali T800 series processors in them except for, of course, called the Qualcomm, which has got the Adreno in it. So let's start with the graphics uh, benchmarking. Here we see for 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme, the Surge S1 is the clear winner with 681, while the other devices are down in the 400s and 300s. If we look at GFX Bench Manhattan, we can see the Surge S1 has the highest frame rate, 8.4 frames a second, which is not very high, of course, compared to the flagship phones, but this is a mid-range phone, and it does much better than the Kirin 658, the Snapdragon 625, and the MediaTek P10. So we can see that having that four core GPU in there has made a big difference in terms of its graphics performance compared to the other uh, processors. Now, how does it stack up for just CPU related work? Well, interestingly enough, it didn't do as well as I expected. So if we take Antutu to start with, it doesn't come in first place. The first place actually goes to the Snapdragon 625 with a score of 64,279. However, it's not too far behind. Uh, it is in third place with 60,121. And in fact, when you go over to Geekbench single score, you see the same story here repeated. The Kirin 658 in this take time takes the crown, the Snapdragon 625 comes in second, and the Surge S1 does come in third, only just beating the Helio P10. So while the CPU part of the Surge S1 looks good on paper, it hasn't necessarily translated through to the benchmarks. However, just one more redeeming benchmark. If we look at Geekbench 4 for the multi-core, uh, test, the Surge S1 does in fact come out on top place with 3,379, the closest competitor being the Kirin 658 with 3,310, and then after that you get the Snapdragon 625. Now the rumour is that Xiaomi aren't just stopping with the Surge S1, they're working on the Surge S2, but this won't be a follow-up to the Surge S1 in terms of it'll be a mid-range uh, processor, they're going to go for flagship end, high-end processors. And the rumour is it's going to have a Cortex-A73 core, probably four Cortex-A73, together with four Cortex-A53. Uh, it's probably going to have a Mali GPU again, my guess would be maybe the Mali G71. And if they also follow the same pattern, it's going to have a, a Mali video uh, decoder in it, probably the Mali V550, and it's also going to have a Mali display processor in it, probably the Mali uh, DP650. So personally, I'm really excited about this to see Xiaomi breaking into this high end where people like Samsung, Qualcomm, and Huawei have really dominated and actually showing there's still room 
room for competition and for people to make new flagship processors. So to wrap up then, we basically know that the Xiaomi S1 is uh, Xiaomi's first generation mobile processor. They've gone for the mid-range with the Octa-Core A A Cortex-A53. It's got a Mali GPU in it, which is very good in terms of, uh, it's got four cores. It's also got a Mali video decoder. It's also got a Mali display processor. And it's gonna be really interesting to see whether the disruptive business nature of Xiaomi, what they've done in Asia particularly, whether that can be copied through, carried through, with their mobile processors and maybe in a couple of years time we're going to be talking not just about Qualcomm, MediaTek, Huawei and Samsung but we're also going to be talking about Xiaomi's processors and the impact they're having on the worldwide market. I'm Gary Sim from Android Authority and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Hit that bell icon so you get a notification whenever we release a new video. Please follow me on Twitter. And last but not least, do go over to androidauthority.com because we are your source for all things Android.